Hi everybody and welcome back to another tutorial. This time we will talk about character creation or let's say enhancing our character game because I was playing around with a lot of new tools over the past few months and I want to share my experience and knowledge so far and I want to give you an overview how I just created different kind of scenes with this new approach. So as you can see I'm working with Character Creator 4 which is an awesome software when it comes to character creation and actually without any necessary skills you can start creating your own custom character just by using some sliders and morph stuff uh, and just change the proportion of different body parts just to create a unique looking character based on existing mesh topology which is pretty awesome so if you're new to the game then i think character creator or metahuman is the way to go and actually you get a pretty solid result within 10 to 20 minutes and not only that the characters look great, but they are weight painted, they have textures and they are ready to use in your DCC of choice, in my case Blender. So nothing new until this process and there are a lot of great artists like Martin Kleckner who already explore all of the features that you get from Character Creator and the pipeline within Blender. But I wanted to take this a step further and really all the credits for this workload belong to Michael Pavlovich. Please check out his YouTube channel to really get an in-depth look of what I'm about to show you in a nutshell. And actually it starts with ZBrush, so you can transform your character that you've created in Character Creator 4 and bring it into ZBrush and here you can use the different tools just to make your character look a little bit more interesting. You can enhance different parts of the body, enhance some details, just change a little bit of the bony landmarks and then you can re-import this into Character Creator and Character Creator will update your character based on your changes in ZBrush and you don't have to retopologize or retexture anything because everything is done in the background by Character Creator. But there's more. As a next step I was opening the mouth of the character and re-import this into ZBrush and for ZBrush there is an awesome plugin which is called ZWrap. And what this plugin allows you to do is you can use some existing 3D scan data and transform this onto your character creator model. A great resource for this is Texturing XYZ, which is, I guess, industry standard nowadays. And they have a big library of different high quality scans, which you can use to transform all the poor details and textures from the 3D scan and use it for your own custom model. So this is a game changer when it comes to micro detailing your skin and it will speed up the workflow so much more and will give you a much more accurate and better result, especially when you're not a character artist like me. So it's pretty easy to use. You upload the model that you just bought on texturing XYZ and bring it into ZBrush and then try to line up the both characters, the scan and your custom character from Character Creator so that they better match in their overall proportion. Then inside of the plugin you will need to re-identify different points so that the plugin can realign your character and your 3D scan matching on their bony landmarks. So for example eyes and ears and nose, elbows, hands, almost everything. So there is no real rule of thumb how to set this up correctly. I think the more points you can give the plugin the better the wrap will be. But like I said before it's a little bit of a try and error until you get a result that you like. Once you're happy with the wrap, you can for example use polypaint inside of ZBrush just to get rid of some unnecessary details like the underwear of the model that you've just bought on texturing XYZ. Save this as your high poly object and then save your low poly object from Character Creator so that we can continue with the next software which is Substance Painter just to bake all of our details that we've gained from the wrap and bring it onto our Character Creator model. Inside of Substance Painter you deselect the eyes, the teeth and the tongue so that we are left with the hat and the body of our character creator model and then bake all our normal details that we've created in ZBrush back onto our model and based on this new normal map retexture your character as you like. In my case I was trying to re-age my character and make him look a little bit older with a few more veins and a few more capillars and all that kind of stuff just to get rid of the clean look from the original textures from Character Creator. And Character Creator not only provides a bridge to ZBrush but also to Substance Painter so you can download the preset on their official homepage just to have the right directionary and saving conventions for Character Creator to re-upload your changed textures in Substance Painter and re-import them into Character Creator. 
But now we are running into some serious problems because as you can see now our wrinkle maps don't work anymore because we've changed the base texture of our model. And actually this was the main reason why I was changing to character creator because I was really really focusing on wrinkle maps because this is pretty hard to set up in Blender but has a massive impact on realism and liveness for character. There are a few people out there who try to get the same result with tension maps based on geometry node setups but they're not there yet, so really this was a problem. But thanks to another cool plugin, which is called Face Tools, you can get rid of this pretty easily. So once again, we are switching into ZBrush, and Face Tools is a great plugin when it comes to the enhancement of the face. So Face Tools will not only take care of all the added details like scars or runes from a fright, for example, no. This means it will rebake the textures for the face, for the body, and even for the wrinkle and tangent maps. And all of a sudden, our wrinkle maps work great. And if this is not enough, you can of course use polypaint to just add in a little bit more detail into the texturing, and face tools will rebake all of this into the overall diffuse and normal maps, and will give you an overall result without changing to substance anymore. And furthermore, you can of course change the expressions and enhance different details, add in more wrinkles and folds based on this. And once again, Face Tools will take care of the baking process and re import this all automatically back into Character Creator. So, like I said before, nothing new until this process, Michael Pavlovich's workflow. But here, Blender comes into place, and this is where I detected some new workflows that will hopefully help you with your own creation. So, Export the character as an FBX and then clothed character. Set your DCC to Blender. Choose Mesh only and in the custom settings change the rest pose to be a T pose. Otherwise you cannot use the character for mocap retargeting. And search for a destination where you can save all the files and then hit export. Instead of Blender, use the free Character Creator plugin to import your character and the plugin will take care of all the difficult node setups that comes with the different texture sets and the wrinkle maps as well. To rig up the skeleton that comes with the character, we can use Auto Rig Pro and then the Quick Rig add-on and just choose the Character Creator preset and this way we fairly quickly create an FK and IK controller for our legs and our arms. And we got a weight painted character with a rig. Pretty easy. Next, separate the eyelashes, the eyes and the upper and lower gums or teeth from the rest of the body. Because now we will take care of the more difficult part which is the face setup. And we have to set it like this way that our wrinkle maps still work with a control rig. Therefore I use the Face It add-on and first of all we have to register all of our different meshes and set them up correctly so that the add-on knows which body part belongs to which. So the main body, the right and the left eyeball, the upper and lower teeth and of course the tongue and the eyelashes. Then we can directly jump into the Shapes menu and once again load up a CC4 profile for Face It and this way the add-on will just set up all the different body parts for us correctly. And here you will run into the problem that some of the shape keys, especially the jaw open and all of the eye left and right movement will not work. And this is really a problem. But don't worry, we'll fix that. So just continue with your journey and set up your face rig as you would do before. So before we can generate a control rig, we need to uh, set up the different landmarks like you would do normally in the second step of face it. Uh, so this is a little bit different in the order of work steps. So just choose your eyes and your mouth and set the points up as they should. And then you can generate the control rig. And still we got the same problem that our eyes are not moving and our jaw will not open. And actually I was writing a lot of messages with Lucas from Autorig Pro and Finn from face it to really solve this puzzle. So thank you Lucas and Finn really for your patience with me. <laughs> I was really a little bit annoying I guess. And the solution was that some of the bone drivers were not copied within the automized process of the different add-ons. And there's an easy fix to this, so let me show you. So hide your character so that you're left with the facet, with the autorig pro and the pre-rigged skeleton from Character Creator. Because now we have to copy some of the bone constraints. So as you can see, in our pre-rigged skeleton from Character Creator, the rotation is set to XYZ Euler, 
while the autoric pro rotation is set to wyz rotation. So we have to change that. Then select the skeleton from character creator again and then individually copy the driver rotations of the x and z rotation in this case and paste it onto the XYZ rotation of our Autoric Pro bone, which is now set to XYZ Euler rotation. So repeat this process for all the bones that are necessary, so the left eye and the right eye and the jaw bone, and then we end up with something like this. And if we switch into rendered mode, you can really see our great looking wrinkle maps that we've set up in Character Creator, and we can now use this with a control rig inside of Blender which opens up a lot of doors to animation within Blender. And don't get me wrong, you don't have to go the way with ZBrush and Face Tools and Substance Painter. You can go with a custom CC4 character and it would still look great. For example, like this woman that I've created originally. And you can use this even in a render engine like Eevee and it would look something like this. And for render in Eevee, this is pretty impressive because both characters hold up very well. And if you're interested in the dragon model, you can download this on CG Trader. Link is in the description. Okay, so this is it. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Uh, maybe if you're searching for an advanced workflow between Character Creator, Face Tools, Zebra, Substance Painter, Face It and Autoric Pro, this is the way to go. But like I said before, you can go the direct way between Character Creator and Blender and use the free plugin with Rigify and you're good to go as well. Okay, so thanks for watching and see you next time.